So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, for those who would like to, you can go under Atlas Demo and then 1234. I'm going to go ahead and go under my name. Actually, just for fun today, I'm going to go under Atlas Demo. A-D-I-L-A-S-E-M-O, 1234. We have been in a, a little company called uh, Greenway Grow Shop. It's a hydroponic grow shop. Just kind of fun, like a, a nursery type environment. Okay, so basically this is, I'm going to actually switch. Instead of running off of the classic home pitch today, I'm going to actually run off of the map, just so you can kind of constantly see that map, like where am I going, where am I going, where am I going. I'm going to set the map as my default home page for today. So we're going to start right from here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you what we did in the last two days. And it's just going to kind of create the groundwork, if you will, of what, where we were at. History and reports, I'm going to come right here. Currently today, I have nothing that is hitting this particular block of time. Another piece of the puzzle that we're going to be talking when we deal with uh, um, accounting is actually how things get organized and, and calculated. Here is a month worth of time, okay? It's very common that traditional accounting basically goes like this. They basically say, cool, run whatever you want, and then when I get to the end of the month, let's see if we can balance, okay? What Atlas proposes is like, oh my goodness, look how much water just went underneath the bridge, okay? What Atlas basically proposes is we do this. Man, look at this nice little block of time. Why don't we shove a whole bunch of stuff in there and see if we're balanced there? Why don't we shove a whole bunch of stuff in here and see if we're balanced here, okay? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, basically, we balance it day by day versus like, let it run, let it run, let it run. Oh my goodness, <laughs> now I have to adjust this and adjust this because... That's a lot of water under the bridge. Now, guess what? If we actually went even deeper into one of these little cells, how deep is this little cell here, okay? One day, so let's go like this, just for a second, okay? One day, we have 24 hours. What if we actually were able to subdivide this thing? And don't quote me on the numbers here. I'm just kind of trying to give a visual, okay? Boom, what if we have 24 hours? What if we wanted to take one of those hours and break it up into even smaller pieces called minutes? I'm going to get a different marker so that I can actually uh, um, show you just a slightly different view. What if you actually took, so this right here is an hour, and let's pretend that these are your minutes. What if you went into one of these little guys right here, and you said, man, even inside of that, I have even smaller categories called seconds, okay? This is what Atlas is kind of sort of proposing that happens, okay? Now, what happens... If you're clear down at the second level, you may not be in balance, okay? Things might be going like this all over the place. But as you pull back further and further and further, basically this line is all random and all over the place. It slowly starts kind of calming down, and eventually as you get it further and further out, it actually looks completely level. It depends on how deep you are into that, okay? So as things happen, like, ideally, people like to have things balance immediately. Like, it's called double entry accounting, so you make sure you have everything. Well, inside of Atlas, as you do an action, it may not fully be balanced yet, okay? So technically, we just did this. Oh my goodness, we're totally out of balance. Okay, we kind of brought it back in. Oh, we're totally out of balance for a second. We brought it back in. Like, we allow that flex to happen because this is naturally what happens as you do an action, okay? And so, uh, I know I'm kind of drawing all over the screen, but hopefully it'll kind of help you get an idea of kind of where we're headed. The other piece of the puzzle that I want to kind of show you, um, just so that we can have a small little visual of it, is, is when we first started doing some of our different accounting type things, we were kind of in a small little uh, methodology of something similar to this. This is what we wanted. Let's say that operations is <coughs> on the top. And so operations is here and accounting is here. So in an ideal world, we want it completely level, flat, straight, so we have everything we want, correct? Well, what ends up happening is we see that oftentimes we need to kind of allow some flex, and then we need to come back into the puzzle. When we first started, this was actually Steve tell, teaching me. So I'm going to kind of brag on Steve for just a quick second. So as a programmer, if you're trying to make everything balance exactly, 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 can you imagine the pressure that you would possibly have? I'll tell you right now, you don't want it. <laughs> okay? You don't want it. All righty? <clears throat> we have a new folk that just joined us. What's Hi. your name, bud? I'm Yuri. 
What, Yuri? Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, there's a bunch of different folks here, and, and as we get into our breaks, feel free to mingle with them, but feel free to comment and, and chime in. We're just kind of starting into some of the accounting type stuff, all right? That good. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. So what happened was is Steve and I were talking, and I was like, Steve, I can't make this balance. I can't make this balance because all of the pieces potentially weren't there. And he's kind of like this. So, Brandon, it kind of goes like this, okay? Your operations is still on the top, but at times it needs to kind of flex, and you may not know exactly what's going on, and then eventually it'll come back together. And so I really appreciated him saying that because like, basically what happens is, is things do need to kind of flex in a real, in a real life scenario. Okay? So in a static environment, how many of you guys know the difference between say like static versus dynamic? Liz, can you explain the difference right there? What's, what's static? Non-changing. Non-changing, control. Okay, great, great. Awesome. What would be dynamic? I loved how you said unpredictable and changeable and possibly variables and et cetera, et cetera, okay? So basically what ends up happening in real life is often things happen. So let's give you a small little example, okay? So right here as things expand and contract, I'm going to switch to a different marker so I can kind of play with it. Let's say that a person brings you a new order, okay? So technically that should be entered in as a PO, correct? Which technically would alter inventory which would alter accounts payable. Well, what if the guy is standing right there and says, I need the check right this second, okay? You don't have the PO in, you don't have anything, but he needs the check right now. Guess what happens? Operations says, I look in the box, I write the check, and then I go back later and I fix it so it happens, okay? So that's real life type scenarios. In a scenario right here, you'd be like, I'm sorry, sir, you're gonna have to wait until I get all of this information entered, and et cetera, et cetera, okay? Like, it happens constantly, constantly, constantly. Watch this. What happens if something happens like this? Say my sister Shannon, she submits me, uh, she's like, hey, I've got this many hours, can you give me a, a paycheck for some work that I've done? Sure, I can cut you a paycheck, okay? Do I have her documentation yet? Oh, cool, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not at a computer right now, but I, I could really use that right now because I'm, I'm heading on a trip. Like, Things constantly happen that are throwing it out of that natural environment where it's rigid and locked down. So what we do inside of Avalis is we basically say, what if we said, let's add a little checkpoint right here. As it starts, let's set the date, okay? Then we'll let it kind of flex, depending on the time. And before it passes this next little checkpoint, we'll make sure it's brought back together or at least ready for that next step. This was our original model. What we're actually seeing is, is that things actually need to go like this. I'm going to draw and realize that it's drawing, so it's going to kind of look a little sketchy. Here's what we think that happens now, okay? Once again, operations is on the top. We allow it to flex, it comes back into play. We allow it to flex, it comes back into play, okay? I'm just going to draw three of them for right now, okay? But it could be as many as you needed to, depending on what's happening to advance this ball. So the accounting needs to do the exact same thing. It flexes, it relaxes, flexes, comes back in balance, flexes, and relaxes. Now this is the cool piece of the puzzle that we can do inside Atlas. We can date it when it starts, okay? We can date it through each little spot, we can add little small checkpoints in time, okay? If we need to, we can even go like this. Let's add a permission line, okay? So let's pretend that Joe, let's pretend that you're my salesperson, okay? Joe starts an invoice, boom, 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 boom. He has this stuff that's as liquid as liquid could be, okay? It's right here in this container, all right? Joe's doing a sale and advances it into this container, okay? Now, in order for it to be approved for payroll, or in order to do our deposit, say there's a new permission line, and let's say that Liz is now going to say, sweet, I'm going to grab this right here, and I think that it's great data, and I will advance the ball, so it now comes to here, okay? So right here, guess what we're doing? We're starting to kind of slowly harden this particular thing. Let's pretend that this is like snow or slush, okay? So you have multiple, you're taking water and you're slowly making it a little bit more firm as it advances the ball. All of a sudden, it's now approved for payroll, everything's good to go, all the deposits done, it's <coughs> the invoice, everything, like everything is fully locked down, we're tight as tight can be. Guess what we do here? Oop, 
sorry. Uh, basically, pretend like I'm drawing a piece of ice, okay? <laughs> you have ice that basically takes your water droplets and you eventually form them into ice. I promise I can draw better than this. This is hard to do right here with a little, <laughs> little marker. This is what happens inside of Atlas every single time, okay? The important piece that is missing is called time, okay? Time happens as these things happen, okay? Say Joe created this invoice, okay? If Joe creates the invoice and everything's good to go and we pay it and everything's done for payroll and everything's been deposited, guess what? We advance this very quickly. Boom, 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 boom. It advances one day. What happens if Joe creates this? It's a week later. Sherry O finally says, hey, cool, that does look like it's good data. I'll approve it for payroll or whatever. Or depending on what happens with the deposits or whatever, say it's Friday at the end of the day, you have Saturday, Sunday, it's a Monday holiday, and you can't even get the money into the bank, okay? Well, technically, it's kind of hanging out for a little bit. It doesn't advance through all of those different things. It's time that actually happens, and so that's how we kind of slowly do the pieces of the puzzle. Awesome. Okay, I, I can tell I've kind of just been talking and rambling and rambling. Do you guys have any questions or comments or pros or cons? It doesn't make a bit of difference, but... Um, I'd kind of like to show you how we like to play the game a little bit. All righty? Cool. Paul, I'm going to call on you just out of the blue. What do you think? Yays, nays? Uh, interesting? It's interesting because it, it is, it does need to flex. It, it does. There's something, there's something sitting there having the units of time to know when it, when it was made, when it got deposited, when it came through, when it, that's, it's not just a straight line that everyone thinks that it's just straight, but it's not. It has to flex and give and take. So. Okay, great, great. And it, it does, and we're going to kind of show you that. And some people are like, oh no, that means that I'm potentially out of their perfect little norm or locked in environment. That environment can only exist when the wind is not blowing and no one is calling on the phone and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like, that is what we call a static environment. And so, in modern days, in modern times and technologies, things happen and it flows and it's fun. Okay? Cool. So, I'm here at the history homepage and I was basically showing you that we have nothing for this particular date. Let's just back it up one more date. Actually, watch this. Instead of me even doing show head search criteria, what happened yesterday? Click. Okay, yesterday, wow, we had a whole bunch of stuff that ended up happening. Okay? This is very important. These are specific dates or date related pieces that were shoved into this virtual little piece of time. Or actually, it was yesterday's date right here, okay? Today, there's nothing currently, but yesterday, a ton of stuff happened. So if we looked at this, we can actually say, wow, what did this do? What happened? And so what I wanted to show you is this is just some basic data, and I'm not even really worried about it. I just wanted to show you we shoved some stuff into there. You can see that right now it's saying for 1023, this is what was going on. I don't have one that says the day after the day before yesterday, so I'm going to actually physically go right here and change it to 1022. But what I wanted to do is I just wanted to show you that some of your dates are going to change and your values, okay? So yesterday we did 6,000 in invoices and we did a small deposit. When I hit get the report, it's going to change the information. It's basically going to show me what I put in that date. So in 1022, we had one four deposits worth 380, basically, instead of 6,000. Okay, we had a number of POs, some very large ones. A couple guys were adding some light fixtures that were like 20 grand a piece and stuff, and so that's why it looks so big. So, anyway, at any point in time, you could look in there and see what these different pieces are. Okay, and so this is where it kind of starts becoming fun. We haven't done any accounting, but I want to show you where some of these pieces are showing up. First off, instead of me just clicking on a quick link from the top here, we Atlas is structured like this. You have a common header, okay, that lets you bounce around. Usually you have some links that are kind of like sub-navigation, and then you get into the meat of your puzzle. If you are in some sort of a search environment, often to save space, I'm going to go like this for just a minute, just so you can kind of see this page right here. Often the show height search criteria will be hidden, and all it does is collapse or show that little piece. It's just kind of real estate, if that makes sense. Okay? Um, what we're going to do right here is instead of me just clicking on these links, I'm going to go home so you can see me hit it from the map, okay? The first thing that we want to do is we have two financial documents right here. Currently, 
Actually, let's check all three across this top line, okay? Banks, what do we got? So right now, whoa, we must have spent a whole bunch of money. It looks like we're negative, okay? That's okay. We can figure that out. I'm not worried about it a lick, okay? Watch this. If we want to even click view the register, what did happen, okay? Looks to me like ER number one was paid to Brady's Greenhouse for 25000 but look, our initial deposit was teeny teeny, okay? So like, basically that comes back to Mick. Did we actually have some monies that needed to be invested? Or like what happens, okay? No problem, we can fix it, okay? This is what's automatically showing up. This is what I'm kind of trying to show you right here. Okay, so I'm going to go back home. Currently we know we have a negative bank balance, not a big deal, okay? Let's see what shows up on P&L, okay? Automatically. So this is basically the builder page, and a P&L has a date range. This is very important to know, okay? The difference between the P&L and the balance sheet is what? Shannon, I'm going to call on you, and I know that you know this, okay? <laughs> and you're like, oh, great. Don't make me pull this out of, out of my hat. I'm going to get my marker. What is the difference between the P&L and the balance sheet? And these are, these are traditional documents that are close to 500 years old that banks expect, owners expect. This is a 500-year-old document. Basically, we still have to play along this game. This is called tradition, okay? This is called tradition. The P&L, what do we have? Maybe one of the differences you're looking for is the P&L runs over time. So Okay, awesome. Continually increase. The P&L runs over time. And usually the ideal is what we call a fiscal year, okay? So in accounting, is that January to December, or is it April through June, or like, et cetera? You know, like, and don't quote me on those months. I was just randomly spitting them out. But basically, you have a fiscal year. Also, if you're not all the way down to the end of the year, at any point in time, you can kind of say, hey, I just want from here to here. I just want from here to here, okay? But technically, by the end of the year, you need a year's block of time, okay? So this is a block of time that runs over time. It's called your P&L, okay? A balance sheet. Shannon, what's a balance sheet? It's a snapshot along that line, so a little okay. piece of Perfect. where you're at. So pretend that this is a little camera, okay? So your balance sheet basically goes like this. As things are running over time, you go like this. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? which basically, according to Atlas, is imagine if this is doing it each and every day, okay? So that's basically what the balance sheet does. Where am I at? Where am I at? Like, it doesn't flex or bend. The balance sheet is going, this is all I am, no matter what. The income statement is like, okay, cool, I got this coming in, I got this, like, very flexible. And eventually, they actually relate to each other, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more today. But that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of your accounting. P&L, we've got time. Balance sheet, just a snapshot. All righty? Awesome. Okay, so what, what we were doing basically before I started drawing all over, and I'm going to do that probably tons, so <laughs> we went to the P&L, and this is what prompted me to even modify and tell you this, okay? So my fiscal year, according to my settings, was set from January 1, and it pulled in today's date, so it's automatically going to put that little date range in there. There's a ton of different pieces that you can play. Most times, for most businesses, I would recommend that you leave all the settings as is, and you go right down here to this one called report type, okay? Now, your report type, this gives you basically four different views, and I'm just going to show you quickly the difference between them. If I say get the numbers, this is my small version. This is the quick and dirty. I'm currently, it's saying that after everything is said and done, I'm making three grand. That's because I don't have any of my expenses in there, <laughs> okay? But basically... You have three main pieces that kind of create, if you will, your P&L. And this is the best way to kind of show them. First off, you have revenue. And Mrs. Sherry O, can I have you define revenue for just a second? What is revenue? Revenue is your incoming money from your inventory sold or your services sold. Um, it's monies coming in. Money it's monies that you in. claim. Right. Okay, so what happens... Let me ask you this, and this is kind of a trick question. Okay, you have an investment of ten grand that goes into your company. Is that revenue? Well, no, it's. It actually goes on the balance sheet. It goes on your balance sheet, but okay. it's it's money coming in. But it's balance sheet. Drive. It is, but you would not record it here. Basically, revenue. What are you going to be taxed on in a way? Okay, maybe that's a better way to possibly say it. All righty, revenue is some. And maybe we should actually say, Mick, what is revenue? <laughs> Let's actually ask a pro. <laughs> um, it's um, the, uh, 
the transfer of goods at a marked up price, or goods or services, uh, and it's obviously the core part of your business. Awesome. Think invoices, think stuff like that. That's often what we what flows into your revenue. Perfect. Okay. The other piece that actually happens is a thing called COGS. Who can tell me what COGS is? Liz, can I call on you? It looks like you had it. You were like, yeah, like I know what COGS is. Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. That's correct. Hello, how's it going? Good, good morning. Okay, so guess what? Where does cost of goods sold come from? Watch this right here. Let's pretend that we have an invoice, okay? Here's our main information. We got a whole bunch of little pieces of the puzzle up here in our main. Down here we have some line items and eventually we might have some payments, okay? So let's pretend main, line items, and payments. Where does cost of goods come from? Cost of goods comes from what you paid. Okay, watch this. It does basically what cost of goods. I'm going to get a different marker. This I think it'll help just to kind of show you. Cost of goods comes usually from the cost of your invoice line items. Okay, and this is in general. Like I'm, I'm speaking very generally. You can actually have an expense. Where you're like this whole thing. I want all of this freight to automatically go to this portion of the income statement. Alrighty, but usually it comes from your invoice line items. And then what's going on? Where does your revenue come from? Does it actually come from the invoice line items, or does it come from the main invoice amount? This is a trick question. Okay. The payments. Actually, watch this. It does not come from the payment necessarily. Okay. If you sell an invoice, even if you haven't got paid yet, you've claimed it. Guess what? From the main invoice amount comes your revenue, okay? Because it could be receivable. Guess what? This also includes taxes. It includes a bunch of stuff. But guess what? We claimed it as revenue saying, hey, we have this or this or whatever. Like, I, I want to I differentiate it for a second, okay? Like, we may not claim that as the revenue, but basically, eventually, that gets deposited, and we have to kind of say, oh, I still owe the government for this tax. Okay? I, I slightly made a mistake there on my... Basically, what we do is it kind of comes from here, but it also kind of comes from the extended cost without the tax. Let me put it that way, okay? That's where your revenue kind of comes from. So forget that. Sorry, I bet. <laughs> okay, so then I was just kind of showing you like roughly where some of these pieces kind of come from. And this is general, okay? Like they're, once again, cause and effect, depending on what's happening, it can flex and, and change. But just trying to kind of show you a general idea. So basically what I was trying to do is show you the three basic pieces of a P&L or an income statement. Revenue, cost of goods, and expenses. Okay? Those are your three primary players. These other pieces actually here are just calculations and or other sub pieces of that, if that makes sense. Okay? So right here, your gross profit, what this does is it says revenue minus cost of goods sold equals. So this one right here is definitely a calculation. Okay? Your net profit says take your gross minus your expenses and eventually you're going to equal this thing called net profit. Okay? So calculation, calculation, standard piece, standard piece, standard piece. So those are kind of your standard pieces of the puzzle there. Okay? So what I was trying to do, and the reason that we were doing this right here is it's very simplistic. We basically just said, hey, run a P&L on what I have. If you actually want to see what your pieces are, Watch this. If I hit back and I expand it just to the next view, you'll see the same exact numbers, but we're basically kind of slowly expanding the piece of the puzzle to show us what we have. Here's our basic numbers, and now we're slowly breaking it into, hey, here's some pieces. Here's some labor that was actually sold. I'll bet you this is all discount because it's negative. Like we could easily just click in there and check. But um, looks to me like here's my different little invoices of the different pieces of the puzzle. But, you could actually go in there and say, okay, what was these? What were these different pieces? And you could actually come in here, and I'll bet you it actually has some discount that was actually added to the pieces of the puzzle. So, for instance, here's some of your negative monies that are actually being attributed. Okay, I'm gonna hit back and back again. So basically, I'm right back here at the P&L. I'm just gonna pop through it fairly quick so you can see the difference. Here's a medium view of the same exact numbers. We're now starting to expand it. How did I get some of that revenue being pulled in? Oh, it was discount. And like, I just couldn't see it. I wasn't deep enough yet. 
and we're coming down. Here's some of my cost of goods sold under my cost of goods, and currently I have nothing under my expenses. Okay, we're going to go one more level deeper, just so you can see it, and we're going to go the fully expanded view so that we can see what we have going on in our puzzle. So it's building the report right now, and what it does is it keeps expanding it out deeper and deeper and deeper, and these are automatic. We haven't touched anything as far as the actual physical accounting goes. And usually it doesn't take that long. Usually it's fairly quick to kind of pull it. So now if we kind of come in here, we actually can see our categories. These are our part categories. These are the vendors that are underneath these different pieces, but we can start even seeing like percentages of the whole and what's going on. Okay. So these are the different ways that things, oh, here's our revenue adjustments. We have bad debt. We wrote off a couple things. Paul, you remember that? You're like, what if that guy totally defaults and he can't do that? Well, guess what? It's automatically showing up. We didn't touch anything other than do operations the last two days. Okay? Yes, Joe. On that Perfect. topic, and then you yes, don't yes, yes. too deep into it, but I guess one thing I've never had explained is what about a return or an exchange? Okay, perfect, perfect. So what ends up happening there is basically it becomes a negative in invoice. Okay? And what that does is the negative invoice basically says, one, I'm going to back out the taxes. Two, I'm going to return that product. Okay? Inventory back into inventory. Back into inventory. And if it's faulty. If it gets faulty, what ends up happening is basically you go like this. I'll just do a refund. That's not a return. So like you kind of change terminologies and you basically say, okay, you know what? This might be why my thing was going so slow. My virus protection just updated itself. <laughs> but anyway, what happens there is you kind of have to figure out, is it broken? Can I use it again? And all, all of a sudden you have three choices in front of you. So there's not a blanket statement I can give you. Oh, I'm going to return that into inventory? No problem. What if it's an exchange? Okay, I'm going to have a negative coming in and another positive going out, and then depending on what the value ends up being, depends on if I owe them or they owe me. Okay, so that's you kind of play a negative invoice game if you're doing a, a return. Okay, so that's a wonderful question. And if you wanted to see an example, we could run through one. But think negative. Sure. Type thing. If it's totally faulty, faulty product, like Just so you didn't put the seeds in the flats. Well, then you can correct it, put it back in the inventory. Correct, correct. So another correct, yeah, of. yeah, piece of cake. So what you have to do there, when you're selling things, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take item A, I'm going to scan it or search for it or whatever, put it in the cart, sell it out the door, get a payment for it. End of story. When it comes back in, is it good? Is it faulty? Are we returning it? Like all of a sudden you have three different choices. Straight exchange, you know, like a refund or you know, like, uh, you know, basically, some imbalance, yeah. yeah, some sort of different little thing. So all of a sudden, you're like, ah, <laughs> you have to kind of figure out which way you're going to go. So that's choices. Once again, similar to what that author was talking about as far as, like, cause and effects and decisions. And then all of a sudden, that affects <laughs> what your accounting is, okay? Um, basically, we, we often say this, the, put the horse in front of the cart, okay? So make your decision, do your action, and then we need to follow that in the accounting. Instead of saying, do all your accounting and let your horse be doing whatever he done well wants. Okay? We don't want to play that. Okay? Um, anyway, I just wanted to show you as it gets expanded out, your P&L automatically will start getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay? Currently, we don't have really a whole lot of expenses. Like We'd have to go look at that one to see. It was probably paying for inventory, which is technically just a virtual cash transaction, if you will. Okay? That's all happened on the balance sheet. Okay, awesome. The next thing I wanted to show you is I'm going to go home. We're going to go to the balance sheet for just a second. I want to show you what's automatically showing up. So by default, this is kind of interesting. You'll notice there's not a date range. There is a date. Okay? And technically, watch this just for fun. Watch this. If I go 10-1, let's see what we have going on. Okay? So in 10-1, I have just little teeny, teeny little pieces of the puzzle in here. Not a whole lot, okay? However, if I go show height search criteria, and I say, why don't we take it to 1022, what happened then? Once again, it's a snapshot. Ooh, got a, got a couple things going on, okay? Automatically, things are being fed into the balance sheet, okay? If I change it to the next day, 1023, our values are going to change considerably. Oh, we did that negative invoice, okay? Like, things are going to automatically start showing up, okay? But you have to, have to, have to think this type of a level when you're dealing with balance sheet. 
kind of pumping along in that level. Ready? Awesome. So we have kind of briefly just shown you a few of the natural pieces. We need to introduce a few pieces to kind of get some of these pieces to continue to flow.